class welcome back to an academy this is deepak krishna vidyam me's first year engineering ami a verified educator so today we are back with another lesson based on the gel space ratio and the strength of concrete all right so let's see how griffith theory influences the strength of concrete in this lesson in general okay we are not going to much deep into the theory but before that don't forget to subscribe to the youtube channel of the academy also follow us through the other official platforms like facebook app and the website so let's start Hello everyone, good to see you, hope you're having a good day. So this is another lesson based on the gel space ratio and the strength of concrete, okay? So previously we have seen what gel space ratio is, how it came into existence and the powers equation and also the calculation for the gel space ratio and the strength of concrete with an example problem, okay? So in today's lesson we are going to see how a Griffith theory explains the flaws in the concrete or how it influences or how it explains the strength of concrete all right so and first and foremost let me remind you that we are not going much deep into the griffith theory because that theory itself has a lot of concept from the fracture mechanics which it which itself is a huge topic okay so we are taking all the concepts in general and we can let's have a small idea about how it just influence how it just explains the failures or the strength in concrete all right so first and foremost let's have a small recap of what you have seen in the previous lessons so it will be easier for you to understand okay so first and foremost what gel space ratio is it is a ratio of volume of hydrated cement paste to the sum of the volumes of hydrated cement and that of capillary pores okay that means it's a ratio between the volume of hydrated gel divided by sum of hydrated gel plus volume of the pores okay or the volume of spaces all right so the first theory that came forward was the abrams classical law which uh, made a relationship between a satisfactory relationship between water cement ratio and the strength but that relationship will hold only for the 28 days okay that is a time period for that but for the gel space ratio uh, that relationship is independent of time period okay that means it can be calculated at any age and for any fraction of hydration of cement that is one of the most significant advantages of gel space ratio all right now let's see some recap of the equations that you have seen in the previous lessons uh, first and foremost let's have the powers equation which calculate the theoretical strength of the concrete the relationship is like this s is equal to 240 x cube okay so the strength of the concrete x is the gel space ratio and 240 is the in intrinsic strength of gel in newton per mm square for the type of cement and specimen used okay now we have seen the strength how to calculate the theoretical strength and what about the x that means gel space ratio so we have the equation for that too for complete hydration okay we have two conditions over here the complete hydration that is full hydration and partial hydration all right for complete hydration the formula for gel space ratio is x is equal to 0 0.65 c divided by 0 0.319 c plus w o okay c is the weight of the cement in grams and w o is the volume of mixing water in ml okay and for the partial hydration the uh, the cons i mean the equation have only a small difference there is an addition of alpha another variable right here that alpha is the uh, extent of the partial hydration or how much percentage of hydration for which we have to calculate the gel space ratio okay so it gives a satisfactory result but there was a small problem for this okay the problem was that the result of this that is the technical strength was much much higher than the actual strength of the concrete that means that for the strength we got from the concrete is much lower than the technical strength that we calculated by using these relations okay so how was that possible and what was had happened so in this case we have the griffith theory of loss flaws actually flaws means the problems or the errors or the missing in a prob in, in a matrix or in a context whatever we can say that hope you understand about flaws now let's see what Griffith theory states that or what Griffith theory ex how Griffith theory explains okay once again reminding you we are going in only in general we are not going much deeper into it okay so let's see so the problem the act as I said before the actual problem was the actual strength is much lower than the estimated theoretical theoretical strength okay so how it was happened what was the problem the main problem was the presence of flaws okay that means the presence of uh, the imperfections or presence of uh, yeah presence of imperfections in the concrete matrix so how it was possible for a uh, satisfactory equation to get a big problem like this the problem was that while assuming the equation the powers equation 
uh, they, while calculating the powers equation it was assumed for the uh, flawless condition or for the perfectly uh, perfect condition all right means it was derived by assuming that the entire condition was ideal all right so that was a problem the flaws was not much considered in those times so because of the presence of flaws the actual strength was low okay so how it was so how this happens so because the presence of flaws in concrete leads to the higher concentration in the material under load higher concentration of what higher concentration of stress under uh, mat uh, for, uh, stress in the material under loading which means that we all know the material will undergo some kind of stress if it's gone under loading all right but this was that uh, that uh, these kind of flaws will magnify those stresses okay around the flow area not floor f l a w flow area once again uh, around the flow uh, in a very in a, in a very magnified manner comparing with the entire concrete matrix so if we if we just look at the stresses that have uh, uh, that concrete is undergoing the stress around this flow will be much high in much higher concentration that if you take the entire concrete as a matrix or or as a entire concrete matrix as a single unit okay so how that happen so that that's that's what griffith theory says that that means if there is a flow then around this flow the stress concentration will be very very high then that that will be so high than the stress that entire concrete matrix under that undergoes okay so there was another reason uh, another uh, phase for this too that means then the flaws will be not uniformly in size okay so this flaws the size varies for these flaws okay so which has a great influence on the strength of concrete okay for for size of as the flaw size increases the stress concentration is also increase okay that means that the bigger size flaws causes rupture at lower stresses compared the stress on the entire concrete so as i explained before if the stress uh, size is increased that means uh, if there is a bigger uh, bigger flaw i mean pardon me not stress flaw if a bigger flaw uh, is present inside the concrete matrix okay so the stress concentration around that flow will be much much higher than the entire con uh, which uh, than the stress that have uh, ha acting on the entire concrete matrix and also because this because there is a huge flaw in it and also the stress concentration on particular portion is so high that it will cause the rupture of the concrete interior or concrete matrix okay in a very low stress that means in a very low stress we have a very high concentration around that portion okay low stress very high concentration though, so the rupture will happen at very low stress comparing the stress on entire concrete i hope you understand uh, what i said before it's a complex theory to explain because it has a lot of concept from the other fracture mechanics and other uh, areas of the civil engineering field so especially in the design wing okay and analysis so i hope you understand what they said is that means bigger the flow higher the stress concentration around the flow which will result in the rupturing of the concrete in a, a very low stress amount comparing with the entire concrete all right so that means stress will act predominantly at that place and then gone there also also there is a lack of volume because of the flow so hence the concrete will rupture in a very low stress okay so we have hearing the word flow of flow for a very long time so you might be thinking what are these flaws okay so some of the flaws present inside are voids okay that means lack of volume fissures small 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 uh, voids like a continuous voids okay bleeding channels channels that happens due to the bleeding water up, coming up of the bleeding water and hence when the water dries up there is a huge channel present inside which will result uh, which will act as a shrinkage crack also okay bond rupture due to drying shrinkage again drying shrinkage happens and there is a uh, lack of bonding and also temperature stresses effect of temperature on the strength of the concrete all right so that's it so so we have seen a lot of gel space ratio we have heard a lot of flaws so still let's have a we haven't pinpointed how it is influencing all right so we have a small point so we will understand how important this is because concrete is a brittle material actually okay which means that it can break all right so so being a brittle material the porosity has a direct influence on in the strength of the concrete that means the amount of pores the in, or the concentration of pores can directly influence the strength of the concrete okay so this porosity is influenced by the gel space ratio 
All right. That means for for this amount of space, this amount of gel. If the gel is low, there is a lot amount of pores. Okay. If porosity increases, the concentrate the concrete will be more brittle and hence influence the strength of the concrete. All right. So I've given you two relationship like bars here, so you can understand. Okay. So if the gel space ratio increases, the porosity decreases and the strength increases. And also comparing also with the water cement ratio. If the water cement ratio increases, the gel space ratio decreases. All right, and the porosity also increases, and also strength decreases. So I hope you can deduce the uh, that inverse and direct proportion from this small tab itself here. It'll be very useful for you. So thank you for listening to us. Uh, thank you for listening for this lesson. I hope this lesson is helpful for you. Uh, please comment your suggestions. Please rate my presentation. Please recommend I share the slides. This is my profile link to the N Academy platform. You can see the other works and the other uh, uh, courses that I've put forward in the platform. All right. So until next time, I wish you a great day. Ciao.